Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. In this video, I'm going to go over the architecture of domain-driven design application when you're building it with using Swift UI. And this particular architecture layout can be used when you're creating medium size to large size applications. Now, one thing to point out, and that's a very important thing to point out in this architecture, is that the model or the domain model is actually on the client side. All right. In most of the applications that you will learn, you will create, the domain model will be on the server side. And we will talk about what domain model is, but this, it is quite possible that the domain model is on the client side in application that just makes one request to the server, gets the data, and all the logic and everything is done on the client side. That's perfectly fine, but it's not that common. But since I want to just show you the basics of a domain-driven architecture, this example would be okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at all of these different pieces. The first one is obviously the view. Now view is where you will see something on the screen. So it can be a game, it can be an application like this, which allows you to give an exam. It can be anything. Anything that the user is going to interact with is considered a view. Then we have the view model. Now the whole job of the view model is to provide the data to the view. So looking on the view on the left hand side, what do you see being displayed? Well, we, we see that the exam has a title, which is Math 101, all right, which is right here. So this particular title can be coming from a view model that has a title property. And all of these different questions and everything are coming from another property called questions. Each question will be coming from the text property, which will have associated points and then we come to the choices. So that will become in the choices property of the questions. So the whole point of creating the view model is to provide the data to the view. And that's it, all right? So what exactly is then the model or the domain model? Well, the domain model is your, the brains of the application. So if you're creating application uh, for exam, what is the main thing that you're trying to do? Well, when the student submits the exam, you need to calculate the score, you need to calculate the grade and all of that stuff. So that logic is done by your domain model. That's the heart of the application, the brains of the application, whatever you want to call it. That's the main thing, the core of the application where all the rules are written. And the domain model can be very complicated depending on what type of application that you are writing. If you're writing to application for, uh, or the domain model for an application that it gives exam, then you will be responsible for calculating the score, calculating the grade and all that kind of stuff. If you are writing an application where you need to order something like from a warehouse, then the domain model will need to check if those things already exist in a warehouse or are you order duplicates uh, and all of those different things. All the rules that are associated with the business, they go in your domain model or the domain layer. And the final thing is the DTO, the data transfer object. Um, we have been using the model, the word model in SIFUI to represent a DTO. All right, so whenever you have JSON data or JSON response that is coming from the server, you need to get that JSON response into some of your associated structures or classes or models, right? So those models are actually called DTOs, data transfer objects. These models or DTOs are very plain and dumb. I mean, they don't really have any logic. Their only job is to take the JSON response and map it to a particular structure or a class. And that's it. So I would not write my domain logic, meaning the core of the application, the rules of the application, 
in my DTO object. DTO objects are supposed to be very nice and plain and they are just there to hold the data that is being returned from the JSON service. And that's it. And the final layer is obviously the network layer, which uses a URL session to, to get all the stuff. You can use LMO Fire or any kind of other stuff. Uh, and the network layer will be responsible for connecting with an API, a web API or a JSON API, and then the, basically going to the server and then getting the data and then giving it to DTO. The DTO is going to give to either the model layer, domain model, or is it is going to give it to the uh, view model. So if I go back, let's go, go back over here, you can see that once the DTO get the data from the network layer, the DTO can skip the model and simply pass the data to the view model. That is perfectly fine too. If DTO object is not manipulating the data or is there is no business logic that we need to do, we just need to get the data from the network call and just display it, then we can just pass it to the view model and that's perfectly fine. If however, we need to get the data from the network layer and then we need to make sure that it does pass it through some rules and regulation, then we need to pass it through the model or the domain layer. All right, so it really depends on the scenario that you are using. In the next video, the next future videos, I will cover a very basic implementation of this exam project or some other project, which will show you all of these different layers working uh, together. So hopefully this is going to at least give you an idea of what each of these layers or components actually mean. And uh, we will probably look at it, the actual implementation details uh, later in the future.